today. You know, I'm not a very good musician. I, I'm no sound. I, I'm a little round now on the sound is all I am. I have to have chords to be able to play, so please forgive me on that. But, you know, this little song was ringing in my heart just last week, and, and uh, it's a blues to it, of all things. We need a little blues every now and then, don't we? But uh, it's called the walk with me. And uh, you know what? I need Jesus to walk with me every day. Amen? We need him so much.
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Where were they? They were in a foreign land one day. Why? Because Israel was not the sin of their fathers. Folks, I'm telling you something right now that you really hang on to. They were put in a difficult position. God gave Israel over to Babylon. And they were all under Nebuchadnezzar because of the sin of their fathers. All they needed to do was obey God. And those kiddos wouldn't have been there. But praise be to God, they had some knowledge. Someone taught them in Sunday school somewhere because they wanted to bring some of these kids back to Babylon where they could teach them literature and language. So we all have probably been in the wilderness at one time or another, taken away. I know sin has led me to places where I didn't need to be. And it was, it was a learning experience there. God used it. Praise be to God. He, his mercy and His grace even works through sin. Amen? And I'm thankful for that. But I want you to understand the devotion these kids had as we go through this. How much they were devoted to God. They would not yield as we go through this. Even though they were in a foreign land, they would not disavow their God. Therefore, at the time certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews, they spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, there and psaltery and symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the, the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews which you have set over the affairs of the province of the Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Now, I want you to understand something here. Now, this is some real good so-called probably friends that's jealous of Shadrach, Meshach, are trying to tell on the king. As a matter of fact, they come up with some of these rules and these laws to try to get Daniel in trouble. So let's think about this as we're going. We see some of that going on in this nation today, by the way. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before King. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up. Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, lyre and, uh, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, you, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. I love this. If that is the case, our God whom we serve will be able to deliver us, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. They were refusing to bow, amen? They were refusing to bow before anything else other than their own God. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he spoke and commanded that they hear the furnace, that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. 
And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then the men who were bound in their coats, their trousers, uh, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst, and they are not hurt, and, and the, the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning, burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. He's changing his tune now, isn't he? Come out and come out here. Come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. I mean, can you just see this? Yeah, what you want, king? <laughs> and the, uh, the satraps, uh, the administrators, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and they saw these men on whose body the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. The, the only thing that was burned on them was their bonds, amen? It was the only thing that was burned. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his angels. And that, by the way, that angel is capital there. That means it's the Son of God. His servants who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, and that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made as ash heap, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then, king, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Here's God is able to use the situation that looked devastating to these young men to be used for the glory of God and for a witness to the non-believers. I want you to understand this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we just thank you so much that you are faithful. And I pray, Father, that you'll put in our hearts this, this, this desire, this, this, this kind of faith, Father, that we will not bow to anything else, but we will remain faithful to you. And we will walk in the center of your will as doing what you want us to do so we can be this witness like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was to a heathen nation. Father, we have lost power as churches. We need to strength. We need to be able to stand strong together, bonded as one in your son and in you. So be with me this morning. Put the desire in my heart, the words on my tongue, to say what you want me to say. And I pray that you'll prepare every heart here to hear. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. How many times are we challenged to yield or to bow to something else in our life? Folks, we've got to understand that everywhere we got, we may not have a golden God sitting out there, but we got lots of others that, that people are trying to force upon us. Amen? We need to do everything we can to remain as faithful as we can with our eyes fixed upon Him at all times and not seeing anything else, anything else. The demands that were made upon the children, I want you to understand this. In, in verses 12 through 15, when you look at that, you, you'll see that they did not demand them to deny their religion, did they? They said, no, you don't have to deny but you've got to accept the other. That's not what our God wants, amen? 
They, they demand that these young men would recognize man-made religion. In other words, the king and their gods had to come first before our God. Folks, we don't need that in our life. Amen? God needs to become absolutely first and only in our life. And husband, you need to be all that you can be in God. When you're all that you can be, you can be the best husband that you can be. Amen? Jesus one time said, you know, if you don't really hate your family, you don't you don't really love me. We, if we love him with everything we have, we're going to love our family as he loves us. Amen? It's a, it's, a, it's a method of understanding that we need to put things first things first. Yes, family is so important. Our children are important. Our, 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 the family is critically important. But if we're not where we need to be with God, how can we be what we need to be for them as a family? They demanded, uh, just, you know, just, come on, you can just, you can go ahead and worship your God, but I want you to yield here and kneel to this God here. But God's truth tells us we cannot accept any other God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Amen? And then they demanded that they participate in man's religious program. You got to do it. You got to do it this way. How, how much are we seeing that the, the, the government is coming and trying to tell us what we can do and what we can't do? And, and they're, they're raising more and more, putting more stipulations on the church. You watch this. We need to rise up, folks. We need to stand in Christ and let Christ be seen in us. And we can make a difference in our government. Amen. We need to make sure that we elect God-fearing people to offices to do the right thing. Listen, there's just the right thing. There's one right thing and there's several wrong things that we can do. <laughs> but we need to do the right thing. And through 16 through 18, we see that the decision that's made by the children of God no, we're not going to bow. We're, no, we're not going to answer you. We don't need to answer you because we're just not going to bow. We're not fearful. You know, we feel that our God can deliver us. You know what? Someone in Sunday school taught them that. Amen? Because they were taken as young into that moment. Somewhere they found the truth. Imagine a lot of it was dangerous. Relationship with them. But let's face it, there were few Christians there, few people who believed in God. They, they clung together, right? We need to hang together. This is the reason we need to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, folks. We need each other. You know why? I need your encouragement. And you need mine. We need to encourage one another. The Bible tells us we should always encourage one another upon this today. Because we may very well be placed in a place where, like these kids are, and will that faith rise up in us? Will that faith in God rise up in us and say, no, I will not do that. Because my God will protect me. You know what, it's, it's, it's real good sitting here and the whole bit talking this, but what if someone's holding the gun in the head? We're getting ready to throw me in the fire. Am I still going to maintain group? That's been a lot of my prayer this last week. Lord, you just let me hold fast to you. Let me hold fast. Come what may, let me hold fast. Let me tell you, I, 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 I've gone through a lot of pain. I, I've gone through a lot of losses. I've struggled. I've made mistakes in life. Through everything I found, God existed and he became real to me. And he, he, he just started leading me. He started leading me. And then one day I finally said, Lord, I've done nothing to make a big mistake in my life. One mess after another. Would you just take this old life and do something with it? Because I can't do anything. I, I'll mess it up. And you know what's true? If it's left up to us, we will always be like Esau. <laughs> right? I, 
needed God to take care of me. These young men knew the truth. Our God can deliver us, and if not, then so be we still not going to die. They were truly sold out to a true God. Amen? So, if God did not choose to deliver them, and their answer was still absolutely, no, we're not going to bow. Listen, is our heart resolved enough with God to say, we will not bow. We will not be led through temptation. We will hold fast to the truth. And then when, when temptation comes, or when this old body comes, open that word of God. Open it up. And start reading it. Reading it and then pray, Lord, oh, please put this to the table to my heart. Please. I need this in my heart. This is where we need the truth. Amen. And the deliverance of God's children. Oh, my goodness. The testing only broke their bonds and well. Only what was keeping them in bondage. I want to tell you, the testing that I had to go through broke my bonds. And he gave me freedom. I have true freedom today in Christ. I am better than I've ever been. Even though I've lost so much. I don't look at the loss. I look at the gain. I strive to be what God wants me to be. And this is where we need to be. These, these kids. These kids had. I wish the goodness. I would have had their knowledge when I was that young. I would have saved a lot of problems and a lot of headaches. But I also probably wouldn't have seen God at work if I hadn't made mistakes. God is a way to set us free from things. And he uses sometimes the trials in life to help us set free. I have a, a dear family that I ministered, I had an opportunity to be able to minister to. And uh, they, they were, uh, they had tremendous addiction problems, drugs and everything. And, and now they have a family, they, they came to Christ, they come to know him, and they have a wonderful little family. He's got a good job making something of himself. She's working now for the state of Oklahoma, helping other people with addictions and leading people through uh, their, their problems and strife. And I have no doubt that she's telling me about Christ. This is what God can do in a person's life. I had a man that I saw, I explained it to y'all one time, but that I wouldn't let him outside his door. I stood in the doorway. And he, he sent me a message the other day. He said, Pastor Ron, he said, I sure do love you. I said, you know what? I love you. And that can only occur in Christ. Amen? This is what happens. But he went through the fire. He went through the fire. He lost a child in an automobile accident. He was very bitter. You know, I couldn't even begin to imagine the pain that he was going through. Struggles. But yet God Put him on my heart and I loved him. Irregardless, I loved him. This is what we've got to learn to do is we've got to learn to love those who are hurting. But these young people found the truth even after they were in the fire. Christ came and walked with them. The decree made about the children of God here is the decree they were God's men. This is the testimony coming from the Eden king, Nebuchadnezzar. This, this is God's men. <laughs> a, a God of our own gods. He hadn't quite got there yet about learning there was only one God. But their action was a testimony that led him to the truth. The decree that God was supreme came out. Gave God all the glory. Everything that he had, everything that he needed. Now what do we need? The, the, the devotion 
needed that we come to God, the building of the faith, they faced the ultimate test of their faith. And we faced that test. And we passed it. They either had to disobey the Lord or they had to disobey the King. Which one will we do? Will we remain faithful? Even in our everyday life? In our business? You know, we learned about deception in our Sunday school lesson this morning. Will we understand and be sure that we're not deceivers? That we will be honest with ourselves and with others? It's important. This is part of being who we are. Their decision was a matter of life and death in this situation. Deuteronomy 6, 4, 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That tells me that doesn't leave much behind, does it? We to love him with everything. This faith that these young men display <coughs> is a perfect picture of total, absolute surrender. I'm here to ask you today, have you absolutely surrendered to God in your life? In times of trial or temptation, the one thing we need more than ever is in faith. Remember this, faith, 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 don't take a whole lot, just use what you got. 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, Beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. You see, what we need is absolute and total deliverance. And what that is the result of favor. Will he, will he do it? Will God deliver me? Will he help me? You know, sometimes we have to go through something. How many times do we pray to God selfishly? I don't want to have to go through this, Lord, help me. Sometimes we need to pray, God. If there's something I need to learn through this, show me. And let me learn quickly. And deliver me. This is what we need to do, folks. Because every trial that we face is a learning process. Amen. Something that we can learn. The result of these three men was they were promoted. They were, they moved up the ladder. And it was because God needed them right where they were. God was going to keep them. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except as is common in man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able. You know, the, the message here, I'll let y'all read it later, but it's got Psalms 23, 1 through 6, Anointing the Shepherd. It talks about a young man, uh, a great orator, an actor, and he's reading, uh, he recites Psalms 23, and then a little old minister comes up. Everybody, they, they give him applause and everything. The little old minister gets up and recites Psalms 23, and then tears run out of people's eyes. The difference is, one was so happy. He was doing whatever God wanted him to do. Folks, be what you can be. Do you know the master? That's the quickest thing that we need to understand. The most important thing that we need to understand. If we know him and we see the open 
the fire is going to be coming and just engulf us. We may not be able to bypass that. But I know a God who will go through it with you. And if you're in the storm, He will go through it with you. If you're in the valley, He will go through it with you. When you're hurting more than you can bear, He will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. All He's asking is one thing. Your heart. Your devotion. Your love for Him. And then you just say, Lord, here, just take me. I surrender all. That's what we need to do, folks. We just need to surrender. Can you turn that to that song? I surrender all. I can do that. I want us to sing that. That's all. Yes. It is on page 275. Page 275. We're still out in the pillow. You didn't know it was good Number. Are you ready? Oh. Dosa, when you see that, you see the devastation that's been left behind. Sometimes that's like lives that's been destroyed due to bad choices and things like that. But I'm telling you that it will rebuild. And that's what God does with us. He rebuilds us. A whole new creation. A new created. You know, one thing I can say is I'm not that old man I used to be. I'm a new person in Christ. And let's continue to believe in that and let's walk that way. Brother Ray.